customers a lot of times will give you a reason they're not buying and that is not the reason they're not buying you're just not very good at finding out the real reason so i've developed a way to to make sure that any objection can be handled when you've got the ability to hypothetically solve any problem any problem because it's hypothetical that gives you all the power in the world if that doesn't get them to move from a no to a yes well then that's not the real reason so one of the questions was, was there a moment or a specific situation which caused you to realize that there was a difference between selling and closing? Well, absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, you guys sell a lot of things where people don't say no. To me, a closer comes in when the customer says no. And and a lot of times salespeople talk to people like they're servants and their customers. And, you know, I don't want to piss them off. I don't want to lose a sale. You don't have a sale until you make one. The other day, somebody said something. I said, well, walk me through what happened. They said, and then he said, and then I said, and then he said, and then I'm like, whatever. And I thought, well, what were you thinking? And he said, well, I was thinking, well, if that's the case, then why don't you do this? I said, why didn't you say that? And he said, well, I didn't want to screw up the deal. And I'm like, they didn't buy. You left something on the table. You have to be able to think and talk almost as if you're the expert. And let me tell you something. If they don't do business with this, they misunderstood something. Matter of fact, if you guys want a new clothes, I don't know if, if you guys can use it or not, but I use it all the time. I say, listen, there's only two kinds of people that don't do this. The ones that don't understand something or complete idiots. So what is it you don't understand? And then they have to come up with something because they don't want to be looked at as a complete idiot. I mean, I close with the with the little framework I call logic. It's, it's leverage, obvious gain, intelligence, and common sense. You just use logic and you can close more deals than you can imagine. Number one, if you want to close a deal, you got to remember something. The reason they're not moving forward, you must find out what that is. And it has to be the real one. Most people will lie and they'll give you a smoke screen and it's not real. Customers, a lot of times will give you a reason they're not buying. And that is not the reason they're not buying. You're just not very good at finding out the real reason. So I've developed a way to, to make sure that any objection can be handled. You guys want to learn it? It's called... Sure. Yeah, there's just one thing you do. It's it's just a hypothetical solution. So when you've got the ability to hypothetically solve any problem, any problem, because it's hypothetical, that gives you all the power in the world. If that doesn't get them to move from a no to a yes, well, then that's not the real reason. So someone give me an objection, any objection. I need to think about it. Okay, now I'm going to hypothetically solve that. So, so Jenna, if you didn't need to think about it and you were certain today, would you move forward? Yeah. Okay, now that just validated that that's the real objection because she went from a no to a yes. So that's step one, moving them from a no to a yes, which is why I think until they say no, you're not closing anything, you're just selling them. And a lot of times they'll just buy and you sold it, good for you, but that's not a closer. A closer is someone that comes in after someone says no. You then do logic. So someone says, hey, I got to get my partner. Okay, if your partner were here and they told you to pull the trigger, would you do it right now? If the answer is yes, then that really is why they're not moving forward, folks. So now you've identified the real reason they're not moving forward. And that's the actual key. That's the technique you're doing. You're not worrying about anything other than I need to validate that that's the real objection. Because if you try to close on something that isn't the real objection, it's it doesn't work out very well. You have conviction and certainty in everything that you say and do. What led to you having that much certainty in business and in life? Well, I think everyone should have that certainty. Once you start to age and you start to get common sense in your head, you realize, number one, first of all, everyone's not going to like what you're going to say. Agree? So if everyone's not going to like it, that means you must choose who you're going to try and make happy. So if you if the choice is between this person, this person, this person, this person, this person, this person, and people start to pick groups because one person's not, not enough, so I'm going to pick this group, but most people fail to pick themselves. You make yourself happy. If you guys don't like what I'm saying, that like, I don't need your validation for me to like what I'm saying. And you guys should do the same thing, man. You guys are worried about other people's opinion. At least people that don't say what they feel, they don't have the certainty you guys witness with me. I think it's because you're not sure, you're not certain. And why aren't you certain? Well, it's not that you're not certain. You're literally afraid of other people's opinions. You don't want to rock the boat. You don't want to come across a certain way. You don't want to offend. Well, I mean, if the truth offends people, well, then I don't know what to say. Now, again, that doesn't mean you'd be a dickhead either. You can say things with empathy, but if they're the truth and it offends people, what kind of idiot gets offended by the truth? Only an idiot would be offended by the truth. How do you continue to always be learning, but not mess up your sales process? 
by tweaking things that you shouldn't tweak. It's how do you continue to build up your sales skill without overthinking it or tweaking things that don't need to be tweaked? You stop asking questions like that. See, you're 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 overthinking it now, bro. Like like how, how do you learn? How do you always be learning, dude? You have an open mind and a closed mouth. Like listen, fall in love with learning, and then try things out. Because again, dude, you had to try the things you're, that are working, right? Mm -hmm. What if you never tried them because you didn't want to screw up what wasn't working? You'd still be selling nothing. But guess what? We learn something, then we try it. Sometimes it doesn't work very well. Sometimes it's a little uncomfortable. That's because we we need practice. But you know, you try it, and all of a sudden it starts to work well. Well, when do you change it? When you want something else. Are you happy where you are, bro? Jacob, you selling enough? Are you? Y'all done? I want to sell more. Let me get my readers on. Look at your face. Okay. You all done, buddy? Nothing else to learn. You don't want to screw up the magic. I can tell you this. Here's how you know when you should try new things, even though it might screw up your old things. If you want something else, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Okay. But if you're not happy, then learn new shit, try new shit and do different shit. Because what you're doing is getting you what you're getting. What you're saying and what you're doing is getting you what you're getting. So you want something else? Dude, you got to do something else. Search people's videos. You look them up. You read books. Every day you get a book in your hand. Because if we want to do something different, we literally have to believe something different. Because the reason you do what you do is because you believe what you believe. Whatever you believe is what causes your actions and choices. So in order to change, you literally have to change what you believe. The only way to change what you believe is to get new information. Hey, I like that. Let me try that. Boom, boom, boom. Prac, prac. Ooh, it worked. Oh, no, it didn't. See, people are afraid to fail. People are afraid to go backwards. Sometimes you go backwards to go forwards. But if you don't do anything different, you're not going to get anything different. That's for sure. I don't know if that answered your question, but it sounded good, didn't it? Brad, what's going on? Happy Friday, man. I uh, appreciate you being here talking to us. Thank um, you. Although, although, just so you know, it's never happy Friday for me. Okay. I gotcha. Yeah, Every like, day is a good day though, right? Well, that's a <laughs> fact. But like Friday signifies the end of our week here. And then you have what's called week ends. Don't make them weak and don't accept that they're weak ends. You got to make them strong ends. But Fridays to me are saddening because that means everybody goes home for the weekend. I'll write that down. I'll make sure I have that. <laughs> I like it. My question is, what is your why now? And how has it changed as you became more successful over time? You know, I think I think my why in the beginning was to show everybody that I, you know, w was better than they said I would be. I had one time someone tell me, you're never going to amount to anything. You're a bum. Really? I'm a bum? Watch this. In the beginning, it was more about just revenge, right? Showing people, proving people wrong. I love to prove people wrong. And then it changed to where now it's because, you know, I'm worth that. That's my why. I'm my why. And my kids, you know, my family, my legacy, as you will, as you start to get older, you start to shift your whys. My why right now is pretty much me and mine. I want to make sure that everybody that I touch is golden. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, for the time today. We're better off every time we listen to you, right? We really appreciate that. Thank you for what you do. Man, my pleasure. You guys are freaking kind, especially coming from you guys. Cause I mean, you're, I know that Alex is probably not around the office every day and you guys, you know, have other leadership, but Alex is still, you know, the, the, the brand. And so coming from Alex's team, that, that means a lot more. Why? Well, cause you guys already have a badass, you know, leader. <laughs>